everybody. Happy Friday, the weekend of, well, like today I think is the last day of Passover. This Sunday is Easter. So um, yeah, it's a holiday weekend. Um, welcome to Between the Sheets. We're here on the first and third Friday of every month here on the United Broadcasting Network. Please call in 323-524-2599. The number will appear somewhere on the screen at some point, but it's 323-524-2599. Um, follow me on Instagram, QTE Brett. And of course, please like our Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast. And we have a YouTube page, Between the Sheets Podcast with Gay and Bruno. So like us there and you can catch all our shows after the video portion of it on the YouTube page. Um, so we have Christian in the house running the boards tonight. Uh, Tony's off and frolicking. Um, and we have another mix of lovely ladies. Um, some old, some new. I don't mean they're old. I just mean <laughs> they've been part of my life for a while. Um, we'll start off with the um, these two um, started the podcast with me. So I will start with Mara. You are gone. You got vaccinated. What's going on, Mara Shane? I did get vaccinated. That was quite scary. Um, I was really scared to do it, but I did. I got my second dose of Pfizer uh, a week ago, pretty much a week ago today. So yeah, I'm really glad I did that. I can't wait to actually start going out. And um, I think I'm still going to be careful, but I really feel glad that I got that done. Any side effects afterward? The first time I had just pain in my shoulder after the first shot, the second shot, um, I did feel upset stomach. I felt like someone was squeezing my arm sometimes. It was very painful. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had uh, a headache and then I took Motrin. I waited to take Motrin for a while and then I took it and I was okay. So all in all, in all I'd much rather go through this than have to you know, get, God forbid, like contact COVID, you know? Right. I agree. I agree. And then we have someone who comes and goes. Um, I will not, well, her name is Tristan, who I know, or I love her dearly, but she goes by Roxanne Rosen. Hey, you, what's been going on? Hey, I've just been working away, going out and partying for the entire month of my birthday. And, um, nice. I'm just uh, really grateful to be alive. This uh, year has been uh, pretty challenging. I've uh, been surrounded a lot by death. My stepdad was struggling for, to fighting for his life for a month. It's been about two months in the hospital. So, you know, um, I decided just to live every single day in the month of March as if, if it, it was my birthday. Went out with my friends, ate. Went out to eat all the time, which if you all know me, I'm a health nut. I don't go out to eat. And I was eating dessert. So now <laughs> I have to work on uh -oh. losing all the weight that I gain. <laughs> oh, God, you didn't gain that much, silly. Oh, my gosh, you haven't seen me. I'm wearing black. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so happy belated birthday, my friend. Aries. Aries. Aries is number one, baby. Aries. Oh, dear Jesus. Um, and then we have two, how it paired this way, we have two lovely women who I adore. Um, they have been, they are part of my past, my pastor past. Um, and we have from Canada, Carla Collins. Yes. Hey guys. How are you? Hello, Durga. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and then of course that segues into, as you know, her Durga McBroom. Dergs, what have you been up to? You, you're not performing it, are you? No, not yet. Although I just saw that they're going to open up live performing in LA County as like April 15th, which is crazy. What? But, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, did you see that? Durga, Durga, Durga had a date. How'd the date go with the Colombian? Oh, um, it was fun. Let's just say, um, okay, so I hadn't taken my brand new little red Corvette out for a drive since I mm -hmm. had uh, my hysterectomy last August. And basically, because I have a new one, because, you know, when they remove your cervix, they have to kind of put a little cuff at the ends to close it off. And so I hadn't used it since then. So I took Little Red Corvette out for a drive and she went vroom vroom and she drives fine. Um, <laughs> but uh, the only... Talking about a car, are we? No, oh, we're talking about her VJJ. And I know! I'm like, <laughs> you're, you're the, I <laughs> have a Red Corvette. Ooh, ooh. Um, so, I had a history uh, with you. The only thing that didn't work out. So 
Farwell oh. is, I don't know why men do this to themselves. He had a big old Prince Albert ring. Ew. And, yeah, it kind of hurt. Thing down there? Bit. Yeah, down there. And it was the biggest one I've ever seen. I've been with somebody before that had a piercing and it was like tiny and it, like I didn't notice it. But this one was like fat. It was like gauge six or four, something huge that was kind of like <laughs> obtrusive. And it got it, it got in the way of, of my of my mouth game, if you if you say follow my drift. Because I, I kind of pride Can't myself. Can you take it off? Or you know, you've got three women no. that are gay. And they're, I'm just sitting here going, I'm trying to visualize. But it's just like, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I love the look on our faces, Gan. When I know. It's like that. We're like, what? None of my gay. <laughs> none of my gay tell us how dinner family. came out and how her dinner was because she made it. And we just went right to the Corvette. I, like, I know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I made a fabulous dinner. We had a great dinner. And we watched it. We started watching the movie. But you know how that goes. And no. we finished <laughs> we were at my house i made i cooked him dinner and it was i made a fabulous yeah. dinner I made this like seared uh salmon with a lemon cream sauce and yeah. cauliflower rice and yeah. some oh, a great salad with like feta or goat cheese no yeah uh no blue cheese and and dried cherries is my new like salad oh, thing good it was really good. She's got a theme: salad. cherries in the salad, red Corvette. You know, it's just like yeah. well, it was the night. It was the night that that I reemerged. You don't understand because even oh, before my moon. surgery, and it I, was a full moon. Oh, speaking yes. of, before we go any farther, the woman who is asking is a new friend, but I've known her for years. A new friend, Ronnie Lo Ronnie Loiza. Good. Is that okay? Loiza. So, I know Lo it looks complicated. It does. It's very it's confusing. It's fast. It's it's the original rebels from France and Spain. They were always rebelling, saying they don't belong to any country. Hey, Durga, doesn't she remind yeah. you a little bit of Martha Quinn? Yes. A yes. little bit. I noticed yeah. that. Well, wait, wow. wait. Aside from all of the stuff with, with the guy I went out with, who was a really sweet, really nice guy, by the way, and a Colombian with blue eyes, hey, can't go wrong there. Um, what I've really been doing is really concentrate. And Ronnie, you'll like this. I've been concentrating on my fitness. I have lost, uh, since February 26th, I've lost 13 pounds. Yeah. Um, in, a actually, healthy way. yeah. in a healthy way. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have been hyper -nutri uh, nutrient ing basically, which is where you do this like smoothie shred protocol which is like 64, 48 to 64 ounces of green smoothies with 75% leafy greens, 25% frozen fruit. I stay with berries because they're lower carb. I'm putting moringa, I'm putting my mushroom blend, I'm putting collagen, all this stuff in my smoothies. And then I like have one meal and I'm dropping weight like crazy. And also- And, and you're good with it? Like you like your habit? Yeah, yeah, okay. it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, and yesterday I had a, a total um, allergy attack too, because I went for a two mile hike with my friend. We busted butt in Topanga and went, went like part of it's uphill and I was screaming and crying and came down. And by the end of it, I was sneezing my head off. So, oh my gosh, that's <laughs> been me this entire time, sneezing my head off with my allergies. And Durga, I also got a hysterectomy in October and I know like they're like, you cannot have sex for three months. Mr. I'm like, I don't know how I'm not going to have sex for three months. <laughs> and and I, so I, I don't know if you did, Durga, but I got, there was like hysterectomy support groups on Facebook. Yes, so I have a great these one. these girls were saying that they started having sex at six weeks. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. And then I've been, yeah. I was reading all the horror stories. If you start having sex too long, you could tear your cuff and then then you need surgery again. You need to wait another three months. I'm like, ah, so forget it. I just like waited. <laughs> Look, I haven't had sex in a year. Okay, so, yeah, I, no, you know, but I think I have, I have gonna, there would be no way the first time having sex after that surgery, I would have chosen anyone big. <laughs> He wasn't that. He wasn't that big though. He was a really Look at nice Mara's guy. Face. I just love Mara's expression. Mara's like, I can't <laughs> believe you're talking about this, but it's true. Marla and so Carla is so Marla is months. so regal and stoic. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm still on the Prince Albert because I'm not much of a Royals fan. So, I know, you know right? I uh, 
I'm just like, no, okay, yeah, you needed, you needed to start small and normal. And that's all I'm going to say. Yeah, try with a stallion. He was, not, he was not small. He was not small. He, was he needed really, to start small. Really pretty <laughs> size for the test. Now it's about his penis. Are you going to see him again? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, oh, by the way, you guys good. see, you don't understand. Well, Gay Ann does, but I had not been with anybody <laughs> since December of 2019. So oh, I was like, girl. okay. Like that okay, was way too long. I don't know what you're thinking. Don't wait that long. Oh, I'm so happy. Happy. Okay, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Let me know and I'll be over your house anytime. Oh, okay. stop. Oh. And then we'll start working out together too because I now need to lose weight. I, I couldn't want to go hike again. I want to go hike again. I got to get out now. I, I have to hike, get out. but I want to talk about yes. collagen. Collagen. Yes. Like, okay, I, I, I won't take it because Why? it, because it's made from some animal something or other. Gelatin. It is? Well, so it depends, do it. Marrow. It's I gelatin. Won't, I won't it do it. It depends where you get it from. Yeah. I yeah. Don't care. If it different. comes from an animal, I will not do it. So there's got to be some vegetarian option there are, out there. There are. There, there are. are. <laughs> yeah. Collagen I, comes from bovine. It comes from their bones. But you can do other collagen supplements and things that make your collagen grow on their own. I'll give you... I'll give you what, but also make sure you get enough omega threes along with your omega sixes. Our American diet is full of omega sixes. We need to get more omega threes. And yes, you, you get, get you can get like everybody. Tilapia was like the big rage for a long no. time. I don't know why tilapia is full of omega six. No, it's, a, omega it's a junk fish. Ew, no, ew. It's gross. I hear it's salmon, gross. I, I eat salmon a lot, um, but you also take omega three supplements. You know. But is it better? I, I mean, I take I'm, my supplement game is super strong. Like my tea could light up the Bellagio. Um, it's very <laughs> an apartment okay. box. But you know what else you can take? And but this might be a little radical. But I take sulfur, organic sulfur. Nice. But where do you Twice get a day. that? Like where would you get that organic sulfur? Um, it, I get it from a specific place. I think it comes out of Utah because I like my sulfur like my man Mormons. Um, <laughs> So I can I, I can get you the website if you like because uh, like the stuff in Whole Foods I found it's it's got a lot of chemicals and other crap in it so I just like the really pure stuff and it what makes a big difference. Too? What's what's the sulfur benefit? I I don't know what that's about. Well, according to this website, just about does everything besides wear a Prince Albert. Uh, but <laughs> you don't really get because of because of chemical farming that came in in the 50s and 60s we don't really have any sulfur in our diets naturally so this is uh it's amazing for skin hair uh and also of course almost it apparently reverses all kinds of diseases and uh i find it makes a big difference so and, and a lot of people equate it with collagen that's why i brought it up well i was in france in france i want to show you all the stuff that i'm taking like Look. like we have Evian and all that. If you look at a bottle of water, there are ingredients. Different waters have different minerals yeah. and how much. Uh, Badois, B-A-D-O-I-T. It smells like eggs, like rotten eggs, uh -huh. because it has a lot of sulfur. It's just the natural water from that spring. And Evian's like the natural water, not Evian, uh, Perrier. It's the natural water from that spring. So a lot of athletes in France, like you see sports events, you see Badois is like one of the sponsors because it has a lot of sulfur. So to run a lot, you need a lot of sulfur. And there, are, and there are vegan collagen supplements. In fact, yes. there's some gummies yeah. out there. It's liacine that you need, liacine, uh, vitamin A and vitamin C. It's a, it's a mixture of that and it creates collagen. So, and wait, wait, did you guys see that? Collagen don't work. You oh, gotta wait. put it internally. But Ronnie Ronnie, and Carla, I mean, I know you guys specifically like are it, like, a woman our age, 40 and up, what should we be taking? Like, what are the staples women our age should be taking? Eat clean, eat clean, not processed, not processed. Right. Butter yeah. is good for you. Butter is not bad. Uh, and olive oil is great. But you know how we went through this whole, I think in the 70s and 80s, I know my mom used to drink cab and everything was low fat and non-fat. We went through this non-fat crap craze. Mm -hmm. well, Everybody got fat because nothing had fat in it. Mm -hmm. Fat does not make you fat. Sugar does. So less right. refined sugar. And we're talking donuts and pastries and cereal. So just eat your eggs, eat your dairy if you, you can stand dairy. Eat clean is what I'd say, whatever that yes. is. Too. And now, chocolate, Ronnie, by the way, is clean. Now, Ronnie, you're not a vegetarian or a vegan, are you? 
No, I just happen to love beans. I've always loved beans. And people always think I'm vegetarian. I'm like, no, I just really like beans. But, but, but Carla, you are, right? Are you a vegan or a vegetarian, Carla? I've a uh, vegan for the last six months. Um, mostly vegetarian, but yeah, vegan. And uh, like uh, Durga, like Miss Durga, I do a smoothie every day and put a lot of stuff in that. And it's got a celery base. And if you're talking about things that are great for chicks, uh, there are certain supercharged foods for hormones, and that can include avocados. Cinnamon is great. Take it um, on. Manuka. I mean, I like I'm a vegan, but I have manuka honey because it is. I mean, ask any you know Maori mm-hmm. in New Zealand. That stuff is miraculous. But I what put you, all the, the stuff. In. What What is the honey doing for you? Like manuka I mean, I don't... cleans you out naturally. Do you know the Egyptians used to do honey uh, to put honey on their skin, and it would. Like if they injured themselves instead of biotin, whatever we yeah. use, a little honey and it and, and it, get, it gets rid of the scars and it and it fixes you. It, it's reparation for the cells. You can so, imagine when you eat it, it it, re- it repairs the cells. So Carla, what? Because I I've seen I haven't tasted or see, I've seen that maluka honey. What's the difference between that and organic, like or like really organic honey? I think the way it's farmed for me, manuka honey. I'm telling you, Doctor Zira, who is my chihuahua had a growth on top of her head, the Manuka honey took it away. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just also, I mean, I've never taken, I mean, you know, I'm all for the vaccines because I want this done as well. But if I'm being really honest, I would love to just take, like, I, I wish that essential oils and, you know, a dream catcher yeah. could fix this for me because I don't even <laughs> take Advil. So wait, wait, me, you guys, I want to show you everything that I'm taking right now. <laughs> it's insane. Look, it was everything. This is, this is like the all way, the stuff that I'm taking. Oh my God, that's a lot of supplements. Yeah, it's a lot of supplements and some of it because of my sweet. This stuff, Rewind Cherry, that's awesome. Uh, I'm taking Moringa, which is really good for a lot of different things. Um, and then for the hormone balance, this stuff called Moon Balance, it's a powder. And speaking of honey, if you ever get a cold sore, you put honey on it, it works better than Zovarex. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, Peanut Craig Gallery, we have a caller. Oh. Yay! Hello, welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? Hi there. Hi, who's calling? What's your name? Oh, yeah, okay, it is me. All right, uh, hi, I'm Julianne. Hi, Julianne. Hi. Welcome to Between the Sheets. Hi. Do you have a question or do you want to be part of the conversation? Do you have anything to add? Uh, no, I actually had a different subject, so I can wait. Sure. If you're... No, nope. bring it up. We're ready. Okay. So um, I uh, wanted to kind of talk about something when, where it, it, there's there's this project I want to do, but I'm also kind of like hiding from it a little bit um, because it, it it involves admitting that you know stuff happens to me happened to me and um, I don't know it's kind of embarrassing <laughs> um, and you know how we all try to be perfect. Um, so uh, I guess I was thinking maybe the subject would be how we all try to be perfect and how we should kind of get over that. Um. <laughs> but we are perfect. I mean, the reality is, I mean, the broad strokes are we have to have self-love. And I think starting with self-love, not that you're perfect, but you try and strive for, for perfection or to be the best person you can be. Um, just, just be the best you now. I mean, I am a type A personality. Um, I'm sure a few ladies on this show are too. Um, you know, I do strive for perfection and, you know, it used to be frustrating and, you know, disappointment if I didn't reach that. But I think seriously, as I get older, I become more realistic in that knowing that nothing can be perfect. Even if you plan, like in my job, I have to produce things and on paper and I've crossed all the T's and dotted the I's and it looks like once I step onto the set, everything's going to be perfect. And then something happens. You know, if you sat there, if I sat there and spun at that moment about, boy, I didn't see this happen. God, I fucked up or, you know, I don't. What you do is you sit there and you shoot from the hip and you become a problem solver not to make it do it. So I'd like to know a little bit more what you can, because it's kind of vague. What, like sort of what kind of projects, what are you talking about? (laughs) Well, um, 
I'm I'm trying to put together some I'm trying to put together a way to help other people who are in the shoes that I was in a few years ago. And what was um, that? I well, um, so I'm a consultant um, and I run my consulting practice and um, I have and then a few years ago I got cancer and I was that's where I started at about hiding it right I I hid it from everybody because I was afraid that you know I would lose clients um, I would lose staff I would I would you know I would lose a lot of things um, and as it turned out I actually kind of did lose some things but you know not all of it um, and I was able to recover and my business is recovered and recovering still. Um, but I just want to help people now in that same boat and, and just say, look, you know, maybe you can't blab all of your problems to everybody, but it's, it's important to be able to admit you're not perfect. And you know, what situation I think is perfect. really great is when something happens to you, like for example, like I, I went into surgery last year, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be telling people that I was going to get a hysterectomy or not. And, you know, when that happens, I feel you really see who your true friends are. You really see who, who, who reaches out to you when you do let people know, because yeah, a lot of us do strive to be perfect and um, look like we always have it all together, but you know, we're all human. We're not computers. And when we let other people know it's okay to accept help, and it's okay to have them just give you love. People were reaching out to me via text, phone call, on Facebook, Messenger, Facebook. It, just, it was just nice to have all that love and support, even though I didn't physically see anybody because of COVID and um, you know being in the surgery and I couldn't go out. But it, it's, it's, it's not about being perfect because in my world, you're perfect, whole, and complete exactly how you are and exactly how you're not. I mean, I, my belief is God made every single one of us. Um, and, and therefore we're all perfect and we're all in God's creation. And that's just how I, how, how I view the world. And that's what makes, we're, we're all different from each other. We should you just know, respect that each other others. and accept each other for, for being different. And then when, when we're going through health issues, just really allowing other people to be there for us, I think is, is the biggest thing. Is this really what Gayanne was saying? It's about self-love and, and just, it's, it's okay to accept help. It's okay to ask for help and it's okay to lean on people when we need to lean on people. Absolutely. Ronnie, you had something to say? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Julianne. And I love that Roxanne. I love that, that you let people in because it helps it helps other people to help you and it helps you because that's unity but um may i ask julianne exactly how do you want to help others or other women like you mean that we're in the corporate world and all of a sudden they get diagnosed and they're afraid it's going to affect their business is that what you're talking about um yeah i mean maybe they're they have a corporate role and they're afraid that you know they'll they'll lose all the the progress they've made in all the hard work and they won't you know they'll lose their job and not be able to get another one um or maybe they have a business and they're they're afraid that you know they'll lose the business but yeah i mean it, really big companies take care of their people but um at, you know at least they're senior people but uh if you're not in that particular position of you know being a super high profile executive what do you do? Um, and yeah, those are the people I, I want to help. Um, nice. And and speaking of asking for help, but I think was it Gay Ann who said we need to ask for help. Um, I, I haven't figured out how to do it. You know, I figured out a lot of things about it. I found figured out what worked for me and and for Julianne, some people I know. But Julianne, I don't know how to make this. It's yeah. very easy to ask for help. In a way, let's start okay. with. You know, you have an idea and this goes in general because I, 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 this is, uh, this is what I do for a living. So you have an idea, put everything down on paper. This is how I would help. What do you want to do? How, what do you want to do? What do you think it looks like? What do you think the outcomes is? Who do you think you'll be reaching? Sort of put together a plan because you can't ask for help 
until you really focus as to what you want to do. Like, how does it look? What does it look like? Does it look like this or does it look like that? What are the topics you want to discuss? So I think you have to seriously put together your ideas on paper of what it looks, and it doesn't have to be linear, just right ideas, right thoughts, right this. And then once you see it all in front of you, or at least this is what works for me, then you can sit there and formulate, how do I get this done? That's where asking for help comes in. Then the first people you ask for help from are your other friends. This is what I do. I show my friends or talk to them about my idea, and then I get their feedback. And once I get their feedback, and some of them are totally into it, then, you know, maybe they say, well, hey, maybe you should do this, or let me call my friend. And it becomes this amazing network of support and people paying it forward. So I think, you know, you have to really know what you'd like to do. And then if you are at least ideas and then get other people involved, because, you know, what, when you want to help somebody, when people want to help someone, we all are altruistic. We all have that. I mean, we're all empaths too. We all want to help people in some degree. It's like with Durga. I mean, Durga and I, for sure, Durga, need, Durga has an idea. She calls me up. Gayan, I have this idea. And then she's talking about it, talking about it. <clears throat> and even if she asks me for something, <clears throat> I'll sit there and go, no, I can't do it. But maybe I know somebody that can. Or, hey, Durgs. Why don't you reach out to this person to maybe try it from this angle? So again, it really is about bringing more people in. You know, it does take a village. You know, you can have an idea of this is what I want to do, but then you need support. And it's not really difficult. The person who's stopping, all right, I'm going to be very honest, Julianne, the person who's stopping you from moving forward is yourself. And, nice, probably. and it's because you, my opinion, and in my opinion only, you haven't really formulated, you're not confident yet about what you want to do because it's all out there in the ether. And I think if you could just hone it down to seriously what you want to do and start to talk to people that will support what your idea is, then you will be more confident because it's your idea. You have to be the salesperson. And I don't, and in any business, if you're not confident, you're not projecting that, no one's going to fucking buy anything from you, to be honest. But can I just add, Gayanne and Julianne, yes. I th there's an extraordinary beauty and connection and vulnerability that I think is going to surprise you. Like, I think when we show our vulnerability and, you know, our all, all of our sides is when we have the biggest impact on everyone, because that way people know you can empathize. I mean, there are so many people who have been through cancer. I think you're going to find that it opens up a world to you as opposed to being frightened of it. Personally, I, I think when we, when we show the side we're most frightened to show is when we make the greatest connection and have the greatest impact. So I think that you should look forward to this as opposed to being worried about it. I think when you step forward with this, it, you know, it's probably part of your great purpose. Yes, I have a question though. When you say uh, you're having trouble asking for help, are you talking about asking for help formulating this idea that you have or just as a person who is dealing with cancer, asking for help? Oh, um, back when I was dealing with having cancer, I, I did manage to find people uh, to help. And, and I, I really was blessed. There were people who were just wonderful. But um, now, that, now that I'm stepping into paying it forward, um, you know, I, I find that it isn't necessarily my strength. <laughs> okay. um, this this, this confidence no, and, and marketing side of things. Right. Okay. Well, then you need to obviously find people that, that, that is their strength. But I would apply some of the same principles for when you were asking for help as someone who was dealing with cancer and you had to be vulnerable in that way. Now you're asking for help to present how to ask for help to other people. So it's, it's very much the same principle. Um, you, as Gan said, formulate your idea, make sure that, because if you're asking for somebody to support you in something, they're going to say support you in what, and you have to go, 
in this. This is what I've created. This is my concept. I might need a little bit of help, you know, kind of shaping it and polishing it and finishing it. But this is the basic premise of what I want to do. And then you, you just have a big mouth too. tell everybody. That's what I do. When I need help with something, I <laughs> knock down, knock on every door. And in fact, you know, I'm having some trouble with my, with my building at the moment, my apartment building with the management company. I talked to the city, I talked to the health department and they're, you know, starting to prove to be less than, uh, helpful in this like they just don't really want to deal with it so i reached out to my city councilwoman and she's on it so just just look at who you could ask and ask them all then yeah. keep asking until you get a yes so that's thanks, how you get help thanks julianne i have to tell julianne one thing like yes mara yeah thanks. julianne i just want to say that it helps everybody when you come forward with a story where you're overcoming adversity of some side of some kind um because everybody is so concerned with image and uh, especially when we live in a uh, society with facebook and TikTok and all that stuff instagram and they're trying to present themselves in a certain way so when it, somebody like you goes through something major and you have the courage to come out and share that with everybody it, it it's like part of your calling why you're here yeah that's what i think and try and also try to distill it down to its most basic simple terms so that you can share your idea and people that, as everybody says they have to be able to understand it you have to be able to say it in almost one one sentence or one mission statement right so try to keep distilling it down so you can communicate it as clearly as possible and that's what i was asking julianne do you have the idea yet yeah. like one main idea or are you just still formulating it? Well, the main idea is to walk these business owners through like a roadmap process of how do you get rid of stress? How do you get the decisions made? How do you get uh, things changed inside your business when it feels like, you know, it was always too much, right? And now cancer's happened and it's way too much. So I want to walk through people through step by step. Here's how you get through it. Well, you know what? I would, to be honest, if you have any any friends or friends of friends that are in HR um, and any company, they would probably be able to help you as to how to formulate it and implement what you want that will be very conducive for companies and individuals to to buy in to what your platform is that's just a thought that's a great thought thank you so much you're welcome i got a lot of them <laughs> so thank you Julia. <laughs> um thanks for watching between the sheets thank you thank you thank you um i hope you know that um you know we'll look we'll look out for you and you know call in any time and we appreciate you and we wish you luck with um whatever you do and uh knock on wood you know you're healthy so thank you for being you Thanks. And thank you so much. I really appreciate your show. Thank you. Everyone, thank you. you're watching the Between the Sheets here at United Broadcasting Network, the first and third Friday of every month. Uh, call us, 323-524-2599. 323-524-2599. Someone make up a jingle, Durga, uh, in your spare time. <laughs> so, so um, you know, it's like, you know, I, you know, I'm getting so tired of talking about COVID, I swear to fuck. But you know, that what happens with COVID has really, you know, impacted the world and how we interrelate with each other, how to communicate. I mean, you know, look, I, I like technology. I like it. I thought Zooms were fun. I don't find them fun anymore. I find them tedious. I find them <laughs> annoying. I find out, I mean, I, you know, in the beginning, you know, it's like, God, you know, I have an off, I've got like six in a row, you know, I haven't eaten, but what I do find working from home is, and we were, we were talking about this with a few of my friends that work in other sort of technically nine to five jobs is that moving into COVID and you're working from home, that it's a 24 seven job. Yeah. There are no barriers, no borders. Not People anymore. email you, contact you. You're always working, you know, and mm -hmm you know, and everybody is at the stress level or the anxiety level. And it's like, 
you know, people say to me, Gan, you know, how do you keep it together? And I'm like, <laughs> um, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Um, but to the point of like hiding it anymore, not so much, um, you know, it's, you know, but one thing I, I'm not, I haven't done and I don't do, but I'm finding myself doing more and more is unplugging, unplugging. I am not an unplugger. I am an energizer buddy and it's hard, which is weird because most people like they meditate and they, they relax or they turn off the cell phone and all this other stuff. And I've always found it very difficult. But now I'm so overloaded with all the technology and all the meetings and all the this and all the that, that I really have to unplug. And I do miss, you know, going into the office and I do miss, you know, brainstorming in person. I do miss not coming into the studio and doing the show with all you lovely ladies. So, you know, how have you ladies been sort of coping with your world during co keeping your sanity during covid you want to know the one thing that i love i never thought i'd ever say i love living in oc um i was always such an la girl but oc has basically remained open this entire time um just really like what you said gayan unplugging go to the beach um meditating unwinding and just really knowing who your true friends are um, all the popular kids aren't popular anymore, are, are they? Um, because there's no place for the popular kids to go. So then it comes down to who are your true friends? Who's calling you? Who's checking on you? Who, who you know, um, lives by you to hang out with you that's COVID safe, uh, that's willing to meet social distancing, that's willing to do fun activities, uh, go running outside, biking outside, and just really getting to know yourself and feeling good and confident in yourself because let me tell you uh once everything goes opens back up those popular kids will never end up being those popular kids again because who really made them the popular kids it's really about us knowing our confidence and but seeing the thing is but 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 roxanne tristan roxanne whatever the popular kids the popular kids or the the the, the click whatever you know they're going to go back to where they were you know, because those, I don't think the, those kind of types of people evolve. I really don't. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, and that's probably horrible to say, but in this time, and I don't know about you ladies, but in this time, I really did truly find who my true friends are. Like, seriously. And, you know, I've got a lot of people around me, but I've only been ser like talking to four or five or six tops. Now, Carla, how about you? Yes. I'd How love to ring in on this because my joke is that every Zoom show is shaving six months off of every comedian's life. <laughs> uh, so here's the thing. Uh, I know it's probably different where you all are and LA is now much more open. When I first came to Canada, Canada was more open, but we, as of midnight tonight, go into another uh, four week lockdown. Oh, so, um, sorry. One of, the, one of the reasons I'm on here is to whore out my new album, Panned Epic, available <laughs> free order for iTunes because uh, support comedians. We've been uh, the rodeo clowns through this, and I felt like that was part of, uh, you know, how I could contribute by doing lots of live shows and keeping people laughing through this. Um, I also kind of, you know, one of the ways to cope, I think I told you about this last time I was on the show is I created this comedic meditation where I do 20 30 minutes of comedy and then take people through a guided meditation and that works better online because people can be pantless and drool and fart and not feel judged and not have to drive home everybody seems to dig it but I also tried to see it as an adventure of sorts you know I mean I have never been outside of a giant city I'm now on a horse farm I became a vegan I'm a cat woman I watch Firefly I'm now a Katherine Heigl fan I don't know. I might think of Scientology next. I'm kidding. So, no, no, save her. I'm joking. I'm joking. Intervention. Obviously, I, I'm a Kabbalist. Please. It's like the blood in the crypts. Uh, so um, I'm thinking, you know, sometimes when I'm, and of course, everybody's got COVID fatigue. My, I have imaginary friends with benefits at this point. I'm over it. But right? if, every now and then I try to see it as a bit of an adventure. Um, that and, you know, the animals. And that sort of helps because... We are, you know, they, they say, may you live in interesting times and we're living in a time where, you know, glory holes 
are more acceptable than drinking holes, at least where <laughs> I am. So I'm just trying to embrace the whole mofo. I really am. Well, Carla, I mean, lockdown means like going back to like stage, like you can't go at nothing. You stay at home, period. Uh, they're they're not doing that as a stay at home order because you know the weather's a little bit nicer and I think just for everybody's mental health they're not imposing that, but yeah there's you know things aren't open there are no indoor dining no outdoor dining it's you you know you can not hang out with anybody besides people in your own place. Uh, again, it was it's a big advantage to be north of the city because it remained a little bit more open here and I can go for long walks and not be masked up. And, you know, so, um, yeah. So, and, and I think, you know, this is like the third lockdown, you know, it's like, you know, Wonder Woman 84. It's like the sequel's just not as much fun. And now we're in the third, we're in the police academy territory where it's like the fourth fucking lockdown and everybody's had it. But Carla, so, is it because the cases are rising in Canada now? Well, remember we've got universal health care, so yeah, they're in a, there's a, a, a alarming rate. There, there are no more ICU beds. So when when the number ticks up, it's a bit. It's not quite as strict as New Zealand guys, but a, a lot more strict than the U.S. Um, they take that into account. So when there's a surge and there's a huge problem right now um, in some places with the variant, and they've just closed down the whole province because people from the big cities were coming out, you know. Hanging the out with is closed. like no one from any like no one from any country especially the united states can't come into canada it's just all locked. no it's yeah i mean yeah i'm sure there's always exceptions but yeah like uh, i mean my older gentleman lover cannot come visit me here oh. um i could come back because i was a canadian citizen um but and there's a strict uh quarantine you've got to pay two thousand dollars you've got to stay at a government appointed hotel so Wow. That's one of the reasons I also stayed here because I was doing some work. So yeah, it's I um, mean, you know, sense of humor, meditations, great friends. And yeah, um, I have a slight dependency on port wine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so glad uh, I'm not in Canada. I thought the United States was bad. I, I would if I were in Canada, I would vote out every single one of those politicians, just like I'm voting out our governor of California. All right, we're not getting political. I don't really, I don't want to talk about it. Yawn, yawn, yawn. I feel for you, Carla. I I really do. I'm so sorry that you're going into another lockdown. (laughs) It's a drag, but I'm also in a magnificent place and it is my home country and it's been, you know, there are a lot of advantages to it. And like, as I said, I'm I'm not here to be political. I'm here to whore up my, again, pandemic. You can (laughs) pre-order it on iTunes. Also, I have to say, oh, sorry, Gayan, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, Mara, please. One of the things that has co- helped me cope, which has been good and bad, is food. So, um, food and Melrose Place. Um, <laughs> shows that take my mind off what's going on in the world, um, I would say, like, um, have you guys watched reruns of Melrose Place? Because they are ridiculously over the top good. Oh, <laughs> oh Mara, please I don't say that. I, I mean, just, Golden Girls is one thing, but Melrose no, no, no. Place, really? The no, Golden I'm with Mara. Girls I'm with Mara. Melrose Place, they don't make them like they used to anymore. Like, you know, that that show is so great for escapism. So I'm not completely off topic. I'm trying to say that some of the things that have helped me cope have been uh, mindless shows yeah. like Melrose Place, where I don't have to think, but like everyone's stabbing each other in the back and having multiple personalities. And um, sounds like, like a, a Saturday uh, night in West Hollywood. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's normal. The Real Housewives of uh, fill in the blank. The Real That's my building. Of- Juicy. It is very juicy. Do yourself a favor if you want to get lost in it. it you know, there's six endless seasons. <laughs> no, wait. My guilty pleasure that's gotten me through this. Prince I'm Albert. so mad at myself for getting totally addicted to it, but 90 Day Fiance. That's God, right. I, Everyone's uh, talking about that. It's I'm so bad. It. It's so bad. I'm going to tell you, ladies. If there was any sort of television when, when Carla, myself, Durga, Nicole, we were, and, um, and Lisette were doing the show. Carla and Durga, you guys were, and, and even Nicole, you guys were, and Lisette, they would all talk about The Bachelor or these these reality shows. And I just sit there and go, huh? <laughs> I never, never no, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's, it, it, look, it's brainless television and it's fun. 
Um, although, what's that one I started watching? It's about the rich Asians. Crazy oh. rich Asians. Crazy rich Asians. No, no, that's the movie. Bling, no, that's the movie. bling or oh, something yeah. like bling. Is it bling? Called bling? I think it was called bling. I am so into bling that. Empire, yeah. like, the yeah. Bling Empire. Bling Empire. I was like, and, and I'm like, yeah. and I'm like looking at, and I'm like following all these people on Instagram now thinking yeah. maybe they'll invite me to a party because these people are yeah. fucking amazing. I mean, <laughs> the amount of God, you know, however they made the money, God bless them. I, I don't, I, I don't care, but their lives are nothing like my, nothing. Now, even if I was rich, my life would be nothing like theirs. It is just throwing up. Let's go to Paris for dinner. I mean, shit like that. That's the fun stuff that I like. You know, that's like real life dynasty. I was so addicted uh, yeah, yeah, back yeah. in the day. So, right. real. I mean, but, you know, and then I, did anyone see the Justice League, the new movie, the yes. Justice League? Well, it's funny. That's what we were watching on my date and we stopped watching. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I've, I've seen it. It's what so much Jeff better than, than, what the, is that? Uh, than the Joss Whedon version. A million, uh, it's four hours long. Yeah, yeah. It's it's like oh, it's almost oh. like that scene in The Wizard of Oz where you go from black and white and then she lands in Oz and it's in color. It's color. That's how that's how uh, like stark the difference is. It's it's so much better. I mean, that was a great. I mean, Wonder Woman eighty four. The best part was the last scene. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch that. Um, I, I just heard today, though, for us out here in California, at least, and I don't know if everyone in the U.S., that movies are opened again today. Yes. Yeah. Um, really? Oh, my God. So, yeah. I have, I have a couple of friends that went and, you know, like a theater that's supposed to be for three to 500 people. There are six people. And they, and they rope out the, the chairs and they rope out the rows. And she's like, I'm so back to be back in the theater. Oh, and I just have to wait till my husband gets a second shot and wait three weeks and then we're good. Right. But, yeah, people are starting to go out again. You know, that it's isn't one of my favorite misses. Like, I, I could do okay without going to the movies for a year, a year and a half. That wasn't one. Me that either. I, I want, I want, I want live performances. I want comedy yeah. shows. I, I want, love I want music. <laughs> I so want that. That. I like to go back You to have that, that. Yeah. in yeah. Orange County. You have everything. So every every yeah, single but, weekend, but, I'm gonna but, have but, I get that, but it's not like the big select, the big, the big names are going out. You know, and I support local talent. Absolutely. I think local talent or I think it's great, but I want to walk. I want to go to the Greek again. I want to go to the Hollywood Bowl again. Yeah, I want that was to do that again. Um, yeah, again, I'm with you, Mara. Movies, I don't give a shit about movies. I don't care. Um, but, you know, like restaurants. I mean, there are some restaurants that are still closed um, and still not wanting like Merrick's and Basics in WeHo. I thought they'd for sure be open. They're closed. The other night I wanted to go to eat at Bossa Nova um, and the line was down the block. So I ended up eating at Chibo. But it's, um, you know, I think we're slowly starting to get back to normal. Yes. And the weather's beautiful here. I don't know what the weather's like up there, Carla, but the weather's been absolutely gorgeous here. I know, I've heard. I, you know, um, I, Durga can guess what I miss the most. And you remember this moment on the podcast. I miss dancing, Dirk. Like, I mean, it's oh, one thing. Yeah. Dancing. You know. Yeah. And on a, like, like the club or like dancing, just dancing in a restaurant or on your own? Oh, Carla, oh, I, I, dance I, I on the dance tables and the bars. Trust me, I would dance at a garage sale, given the opportunity. Right? Like, I will dance anywhere. But yes, I do miss uh, dancing in clubs and dancing with people. Yeah. And yeah dancing. I miss dancing. Yeah. Taking a dance but class. You, know, you learned a lot about yourself this year. But I mean, you really did learn what am I made of and what's important to me and who's important to me. Not just who remembers me, but who is important to me and what is what are my priorities. I let go of a lot of things that really weren't that important anymore. Exactly. And, like stuff mm -hmm. and things I did. You know, busy is not productive. Right. So yeah. you, really, you start appreciating the little things that you just took for granted before. That's it. And and not to get political or anything, but we had to clamp down in order to get better. We just yeah. had to. Exactly. That was it. Why is that political? It's not political. Okay, good. It's science. Okay. It's it, it, you know, political. It's and not so political. It's not. I also found out what I really want to do the rest of my life. What do I want to do when I grow up? And I'm 55 turning 56. I had a job. Now I have a mission. 
you know, so what so do you want to do now? Out, what do we want to do if tomorrow were my last day? What, what am I leaving as a legacy? What do I want on my tombstone or my obituary? I know I'm going a little too far, but really, was I just working for the dollar? Now I want something to leave behind that made a damn difference. You have a good, what point. Is that? a good point. No, go ahead. I was going to say. I just want to know what, what it was that you discovered you wanted to do. I don't, I don't want to be a personal trainer anymore. And I love training, but it was just really driving around working for the dollar. And I love fitness because I think anyone can work out no matter what, whether you're in a wheelchair or you're 65 years old or whoever, because fitness is part of self-care. But I have turned into a fitness coach. That's different. That's going layer. Why do you want to lose five pounds? Well, because I'll look better in my bikini. Why do you want to look better in your bikini? And it goes down like nine layers. Oh, the psychological theme and the nice. concept. It really goes back to their childhood half the time. I'm really finding out almost therapeutic, like this is really why and what's up and how I feel about myself. It's hard for many women to look in the mirror in the morning and say, I love you to them. Oh, yeah. They, like, they, they can't. They're like, nah, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, I love you. There was, a friend of mine, there was a friend of mine because, you know, we all have body issues. Even if, even if people are thin, we all as women have body issues mm -hmm. and- I mean, there was a friend of mine, she passed away. She used to say to me, she used to always, you know, there's two things she always used to say to me, you know, oh, if someone, you know, be a taker, not a taker in a bad way, learn how to receive. You don't, you give, 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 but you don't know how to receive. And the second thing that she kept saying is you have to learn to love yourself. You, you talk a good game or you act like you do, you act it, but you do, you really believe it. And she said to me, every morning, you should stand in front of your mirror naked, really, and just sit there and go, I love you. And it is so awkward to do that. Because as you're looking, you know, you're seeing the imperfections, you're seeing this, you're seeing that. And I think as women, and I, I can't speak because I don't, I'm not a man, I don't know what, if, what men do, but we are so hypercritical of ourselves. Yeah as women, and Mara brought up a topic to, to eventually be brought up about body image. So Mara, why don't you take it from there? Talk about the ladies that you found on Instagram. Okay, so what's helped my body image, and I have a really poor body image. Um, I've been Gorgeous. heavier, I've been, oh, thank you, whoever said that. I but I have had really bad body image where I'm never, I'm always striving for perfection. Like I'm not perfect. I, I, I need to look better all the time. And then I'll be worthy if I, if I'm, you know, and if someone doesn't want to date me, it's because I'm too fat or the whole fat phobic thing. So what's help, helped me in the last six months, besides actually taking control and of what I eat and exercising all the time is on Instagram, there are body positive women on there with accounts that I become obsessed with um, women that are very overweight, women that are morbidly obese, even, and they're and then women that are just average, like me, you know, or 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 bigger than me, whatever, that are showing themselves in their bikinis, in their underwear, um, and they're normalizing cellulite and rolls, and they're showing it off, and they're just absolutely embracing it and when you get, I never grew up with anything like that uh, on the media it was always just the skinny girls you know where the the Melrose Place dated Melrose Place <laughs> I watch Melrose Place right now yeah. because they're like toothpicks like bobbleheads <laughs> freaking Heather Locklear but um <laughs> so what I'm saying is being inundated every day with these accounts on Facebook where they are celebrating their fat and their imperfections and and then they have all these fans that are like girl you look great you look amazing and then you get women with their instagram accounts that are like hey people just to let you know your body was never the problem we're we are in diet culture and the media and society has has done a number on all you people because it's normal to look to have textured skin and extra weight like why should that hold you back from living a, a good life? Which well, you have gonna, no for me. I'm going to interrupt you because we have another caller. Okay, sorry. No, no, don't apologize. You're going to finish. Hello, welcome to Between the Sheets. Who's calling? Hey, Gay Ann, it's Valerie Milano. Valerie Hi. Milano! Oh. Yay. Valerie, are hey, you by the Valerie? way, I love... 
Of course I am. That name? Hell yeah, girl. <laughs> uh, anyway, I am in Palm Springs at my home in Palm Springs right now with a glass of wine. I'm naked in my jacuzzi. <laughs> and I know you all want to be here. Yeah. Yep. Let's do it sometime. All right, let's <laughs> go. Yep, let's go. It's fucking hot out here. Um, but I wanted to tell you, Gayan, that that I love Mara and I love Durga, but I really like your three new ones. They're beautiful ladies. <laughs> Thank you for being You're there. <laughs> Thank you, Val. Thank By you. the way, everyone, everyone, Val, you know, Val, um, she has, uh, Val's a reporter and she owns um, The Hollywood Life. So she also, I've known her for 30 years at least. And um, she has been a rotating co-host too when she's not globe trotting to Palm Springs and back. So we miss you, Val. I miss you. I miss seeing you. I want to go to the house here, here or Thank Palm you. Springs. Thank you. Anytime. Bring your crew, man. I just got my second COVID shot, so I'm good to go. I'm drinking a lot. That's how I'm dealing with COVID, but what else is new? <laughs> and I am, <laughs> I'm going to a wellness retreat to uh, get cleaned out and, and get back on track. And hopefully every the whole world will be on track. So I'm going for two weeks to Sedona, Arizona. Oh, how beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. Wow. nice. Well, so you I just wanted to call in and tell you. Well, what? thanks for calling in and please report back because I'd love to hear about the wellness thing when you get back. I will for sure. Y'all have fun. I'm watching on Facebook and I uh, love you. Love you love all. You Thank too. you, Gayan. You're amazing. Thanks, Val. Love you too. Bye. So, so, so getting back to Buddy. I'm going to Santa Fe. I've been to Sedona, but I'm going to Santa Fe. I think I told you guys. And um, I read the airline thing today. I didn't know this. You have to have your COVID shots on American Airlines two weeks, at least two weeks before your second shot. I didn't know that. I, I will be uh, my, my second shots this Sunday, but I didn't know that. I didn't read the fine print. No, Wait, a lot of people have a COVID vaccine in order to fly now? Certain airlines, yeah. Certain airlines, American, I think Delta oh, too. That is absolutely wrong. No, they're protecting themselves. No, Liability and they have a right. No, I just no, no one should be forcing vaccines on anyone. You are not forced to fly the body airline. image. Exactly. Uh, body image topic. What? What yeah, body image? We're going to go into the body image topic some more, Gan. Yeah, that's right, Mara. You and I will do that. <laughs> I have these two ladies who want to start training with me, and they were like, "We want to get rid of these," and they they're showing me their this mm -hmm. this well, pinch it, and I said, "Is that fat or is that skin?" And so they're pinching away. I'm like, honey, that, that's skin. They're like, yeah. I'm like, no amount of push-ups is going to get rid of that. You can get tighten up. Like, you can get muscle. You can get fit. But if that's just skin, and they're over 60, I'm like, plastic surgery. And they're like, really? Like, yeah. They don't have collagen anymore. We're losing our collagen every single day. We're going to get jowls. We're going to get droopy skin. It's just life. And I'm not going to lie to them. I'm like, you can work out and we can make everything healthier and your immune system and your metabolism. But if you got saggy skin, plastic surgery or love yourself. And it was like a little bit of skin. And like, well, thank you yeah. for being so, so frank with us. And, and like one girl wanted to get rid of her cellulite behind her legs. She, I could barely tell. I'm like, you're calling the cellulite? She was in her 20s. I'm like, honey, cellulite is just tissue inside your in your but you know your you're not I mean, gonna the get it. skinny people god bless them you know they got like skinny people are like rich people they got problems not so much but it's about you know it's like for me i'm bad i'm bad 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 i you know i sit here and i i mean i was talking to a friend of mine the other day and i said very blatantly and i thought i heard it coming out of my mouth as i'm saying because i don't i don't think before i talk it's just i just talk i blurt and i'm like i'm gonna only date my next girlfriend is only gonna be you know she's not gonna be fat or overweight i mean she's not gonna be skinny like she could be my size maybe a little bit bigger but other than that off the checklist you know and i'm sitting here going you know and it's like what i described who i want to date is who I want to be. That's what it, it's like. I want to be this person. And so it's not like I won't date them. 
it's I'm I have to look back to me and say you just you just described your perfect person it's not today it's who you think you want to be because that person doesn't matter who they are whatever who it's about the inside not about the outside but because I have a self-image I mean I used to like I said last show or two shows ago, I used to be a size 16 so I don't ever want to go and be that big again but then I'm thinking you know and this sounds as horrible I don't want to be with someone that big either and part of me and this is so fucking shallow and I am not a shallow person but it just creeps in from all my baggage thinking I don't want to be embarrassed to be with someone large as a partner. Oh. I so thought you didn't no... want to be with somebody that large because of their mindset. And so you were afraid to slip back into their habits and that they well, you know how couples exactly. are, not all couples, but you know, like if, okay, I have seen this in couples. If one of them is, let's say not even fit, just normal. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fat ish, you know, and then they get with someone that's larger, okay? I have seen the middle-sized person go up in weight, and now you've got two large people. And it's not- Yeah, and that's not necessarily the trajectory for everyone. No, 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 but it, I've seen people do it. I'm not saying this is across the, the board, this is what happens, because then it should work the other way. If you're with someone thin, then you should be thin too. But I do notice that when people get maybe comfortable in relationships. And if their partner really doesn't take good care of themselves, then they kind of start to lose that too. I'm not saying it. I'm saying it like a, like a maybe five or six people that I know. Well, I think this is like a very slippery slope conversation here because <laughs> I, I, do, I, do, um, I do view that God made us all a, a certain way. Uh, I can't help the fact that I'm small and petite, just like others can help the fact that they're big bone and bigger. Um, it doesn't mean either one of us looks but, better than But it doesn't other. mean they're not good but, people. That's not my point. No, I, I, I know, but, but let me I think tell we you, all... I, I've seen skinny people, once they get in relationships, they go out and eat all the time. They gain 10, 15 pounds their first year. So it, it's... It's skinny people, it's average people, heavy set people, and you know it's not that it's not that you know what you, whoever said it earlier that heavy set people have a certain mindset. They don't. They have a regular mindset just like the rest of us. Some people have slower metabolisms. Some people just have their fat storages where they have their fat storages. Um, you know, I mean, that's it, what I was like. That's what I like about Mara. That's what I liked what Mara said. That's why Mara has sent me you know, these Instagram people and videos, because, you know, I'm looking at that. I'm like, you know, why can't, you know, you know, they embrace who they are. Cause we all, we all have to love ourselves. Well, so you know, what? I will tell you being in health and wellness for 25 years and running, um, you know, personal training studios and having my wellness company, and everything else. Um, no one loves the way they look, even the skinny girl. Yeah. Exactly. I had the skinny girl that, exactly. uh, she was gorgeous. I think she was in her early twenties. Um, and she like got the back of her leg and pushed it together where her hamstring is. And she goes, I have cellulite. I need liposuction. I'm like, no, you're literally stop. keeping your skin together. <laughs> it's, that's you pump. it's not cellulite. Mara, so I'm, I'm going to tell you. Roxanne, that's what I was telling you. It I have young Roxanne, Roxanne, Roxanne and Ronnie. Hold on, like hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Mara, and then we have Durga. Yeah, I just want everybody, what, what has opened my mind by following these Instagram accounts over the last six months and being saturated in their posts. And then on, on the other hand, I have the before and after diet accounts that I, I watch too. What What's saturating my mind and blowing my mind about these women is that they're right, that we have been in diet culture and there has been a number done on all of us women. And I mean, men, that, that, that we have to shrink, we have to chisel ourselves down and we have to apologize. Like we can't, we have all the shame tied up in being what, anything that isn't like a nine-year-old boy's body, you know? And I feel that it's not fair that we have grown up with these saturated dieted 
uh, images that are unattainable for a lot of us, unless you're just an Amazon and woman and you're lucky that you're born that way. But, you know, what I like and respect about them is they're trying to tell you that curves and being big is nothing to be ashamed of. And it should be more out there and it should be, um, we have to start getting the, the eyes out there to start like feeling that this could be sexy as well. And that just hasn't happened. It, as long as I've been alive for 46 years, it's big has been the worst thing you could be. Jargo, and let me I, tell you, I, I would give any process. Process. Hold on, calm down. I'll jump back Durga. to Durga. All right, Durga Carla. Okay, so what we have to realize is for the majority of human history, big women were seen as sexy, as oh. women, as able to produce children so fecund and fertile was seen as sexy mm -hmm. and it yes. wasn't really until the 1960s mm -hmm. when you had and i hate to say it this way but, but there were several very prominent gay male designers they pushed the shrimp and twiggy as models that were these anorexic almost boy-like waif looking girls mm -hmm. and I, I hate to say this because I don't know it for a fact but it almost felt to me like there was some woman hating going on yes and so we were taught to be ashamed of and hate our natural bodies and we were not perfect unless we looked like Twiggy this is when I was growing up in the 60s mm -hmm. and you had to be this anorexic no boobs no hips no waist, basically your head looked too damn big on your body yeah. um, to, in order to be considered beautiful. And add to that, like when I was growing up, of course, Marsha Brady was the thing and like black girls, where were they? There weren't any. So I was like miles away from what the uh, Eurocentric ideal of beauty was. And ever since that time, skinny has been in. And it's only now that the pendulum is swinging back because it's so much work, not to mention, then you start adding Photoshop and all this other stuff and people oh, yeah. are hating these images in print and ads that no human woman can ever look like, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like uh, exceptional in a way because when I was in my, actually, this is probably my 30s, I don't know if, if I can show you this or not, but um, my body looked like this, okay? <laughs> and I didn't do shit. I just looked like that, okay? Um, and now that I'm older, I'm learning to embrace more of my curves, although I'm doing this weight loss thing now out of health reasons. Yeah. And absolutely. because I feel better a little bit smaller. I don't want to get this skinny again because I had no boobs. <laughs> I no boobs, like that's I just got to say right before Carla talks, I'm surprised that everybody's talking about sizes when every, when anybody approaches me, I think of, are you healthy? And I start talking about yeah. the vital signs. I never look at the shape and size. We're all so different. And I don't like it when somebody calls me skinny. It, it just pings me like, I'm not skinny, I'm strong. Mm. Like they think if they're complimenting healthy, me or healthy. something. I'm sorry, Carla, go ahead. You were uh, No, no. I, first of all, when we say I love you in the mirror, I think it really helps to wear a jaunty chapeau because I don't feel awkward at all. <laughs> Right. I'm almost naked 24 seven. First of all, I can't get enough of it. I'm a recovery nudist. You know, I used to, I, cause where do you put your phone? So <laughs> but I, I can slip at any moment. I'll be like in a Trader Joe's parking lot pantless and I embrace it, but I do, I, I'll like, just to add some levity, I do a whole bit about body shaming when yeah. I'm on stage and I've actually had people say, well, I don't know if somebody who's on the thin side should be doing that. I'm like, I think it can be anyone. Yeah. And you know, when I don't, when I see someone, I don't say, are you skinny or are you healthy? I'm like, do you have any money? Because <laughs> I'm a comedian No, But I mean, to Durga's point, you know, obviously there was the painter Rubens and women were Rubenesque and you had a pint of Haagen-Dazs and you sat and got your picture taken and Marilyn Monroe, still one of the only icons, the model of beauty. And I tell people you're chasing them. So Marilyn was there and everybody wanted to have curves and their lady humps. And then Twiggy came and we all had to look, as we've said, like a 14 year old boy with polio or rickets. I don't know what we're going for. 
Right. And then it was fat Madonna. And then Kate Moss came and I'm like, oh, we got to do cocaine again. And I need to look like hangman <laughs> heels. And then, you know, like it, it said, and then all of a sudden it was the Kardashians and Nicki Minaj. And I'm like, look at my white flat ass. Someone help me out. <laughs> so I just assume that it's never going to end. Like soon it will be like, you don't have, and I know this is what a jerk is joke, joke. You don't have a mole that looks like Pol Pot. Ew. Or what are you doing with still two breasts? Just one breast. Be a unicorn, bitch. <laughs> like it's, it's never going to end and all, and it's also terribly subjective we've yeah. all had a friend who's like look at this isn't he hot or isn't she beautiful and you're like okay yeah um, you know i mean <laughs> also, how the fuck could we ever look like what we think we're, we're not shapeshifters well i mean i am but I mean, for the rest of you it's difficult <laughs> No, wait, no, you just remind me of something. I'm, you know, I'm on dating apps and stuff like that. And I just found this guy. How do people come up with their profile pictures? I swear to you, I sent a picture of this guy to my friend and I was like, does this not look like just out of frame? He's got a butcher knife in his eyes are like yep. saying, hey, baby, let me come over and stab you in the neck, you know, because he looked like a serial killer. Yeah, can you say that to me? You know I love serial killers. I'm just I would let Reminds, Keith Morrison do hey, by things. the way, hey, by the way, if anyone is a fan of CSI, the original CSI, CBS just announced today we're coming back for a limited series. Um, I I don't know. Um, so it's mine. So I'm really excited to work with the team again. Um, Carla, I will. I'm sure Criminal Minds will come back at some form or another. Why not? Um, but um. But I agree. And it's like, you know, if you're hearing everybody and, and listening and, you know, it really does come down for me why I'm so judgmental. Um, and I don't really want to be because I don't like to be. It's really me that I need to going back to self-love. I need to be comfortable in my own skin. I mean, you know, again, I lost 32 pounds, not because I wanted to be skinny. I just... Yeah, I mean, that was part of it, but I really started doing it to be healthy because as you get older, you can't work off those calories, you know? So I really decided to do a healthier lifestyle. And, you know, I'm fortunate that I did lose the weight. So it wasn't about vanity, but, you know, there's parts of me that as, as I was losing weight, I'm like, how come I'm losing it from the waist up? It's the bottom part that I'm more concerned about that I don't love. But, you know what? but I have that, that kind of body. I have an hourglass <laughs> figure. My mother had it. My grandmother had it. I mean, I mean why I thought I would lose weight <clears throat> and have that flat chested, like tiny little white person ass, I have no clue. <laughs> but it's about you know, me. And so, you know, and, and even, and it's about against receiving because when people go, oh God, Gan, you look great. You look this, you look that. I'm like, yeah, thanks. 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 So I'm not even owning up to appreciating or, or giving myself credit for having a healthy lifestyle because in my sicko mind to some degree, I'm not I don't look like what I really wanted to look like after I lost 30 pounds. How do, How do you feel? I feel great. But that's you know, it. But the thing is, I, I and I think a lot of it has to do with like really horrible body image growing up, you know, for myself. Okay. I mean, if someone, even to this day, if someone as a joke says, Oh, you're putting on some extra weight or you're getting some weight, I have to tell you, I go through such a like a little panic, and then I take it very personally. And like all of a sudden I'll start tearing up, but that goes back to my past. Cause I was always joked about that. I was chubby or this. So, you know, and I'm working this through therapy. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like trying to solve this shit myself, but I think a lot of, and I also work in Hollywood. I see actors and actresses all the time. And, yes. you know, and you look at that and you go, you know, they're great, but why, why not me? So I have to sort of learning, learning now to sort of, at 57, to sort of flip that switch and not make that such an important bane of my existence. Yeah. Well, to you know, the thing is, if you're, I mean, I'm really fortunate and I don't mean to sound conceited, but the majority of my life, I have been someone who's looked in the mirror naked and loved what they saw. I used to run around naked all the time because I really liked my body. And part of the, uh, another reason why I'm changing stuff now is because I didn't like how I was looking. I mean, 
technically speaking, from my heaviest, like I was at my heaviest I've ever been in my life about a year ago. And I've lost 20 pounds since then. Mm -hmm. um, and I can see it in my face. I didn't like looking in, you know, pictures and on cameras with this fucking Zoom all the goddamn time and seeing my face look all puffy and bloated and I'm starting to look like me again, which I like. So sure don't do this for other people, do it for you. If you're exactly. not feeling like home, if you don't like- But, like, but I have a question, Jerga. Ladies, what if I have a friend? I'm a, I, have a, I have a friend and I lost weight and she's excited that I lost weight, but you know, I keep losing weight, not on purpose. It just is happening. I changed something out of my right. diet this week. You know, I stopped sugar, you know, I, I see what happens. And she says, it was, you know, you need to gain some weight. You're starting to look anorexic. And you don't look anorexic, Ann. That's you, you look healthy. You look and healthy. Thank you. And it's like, for me, it's like, to me, that's a slam. It's a way, it's like, and she's like, you know, I think you have a eating disorder. And I'm thinking, well, no. you never have met someone with an eating disorder. Right. I have. Look, um, everybody has their perspective of where what they're looking at. And for whatever reasoning, they feel that their opinion should be told to you. And it's, you know, it's like everyone has buttholes. They're like opinions. It's the same thing. Right. You know, what I'm trying to say is you didn't ask. You know, you didn't ask for her opinion. Or it might well, be a reflection what? of what she's she feeling. It might be a reflection of something she's no. feeling inside. Yeah, exactly. she's no, listen, transporting listen. her issues onto you. Durga. Next time, next time you see this person and she says, "You look like you have an eating disorder," you should go, "Bitch, I love my body right now. I love how I feel. If you don't like it, you can step the fuck off." And my big black friend yeah. Durga said me for me to tell you that. <laughs> this is my big round Italian ass because I love it. <laughs> okay. There you go. Okay. You know, you gotta have friends. That's why I love this show. We all sort of have each other's backs, and then. You know, when, when all else fails, you just call Durga and she'll kick their ass. <laughs> and this may sound like a really dumb question, but does it change your singing when you lose a lot of weight or gain a lot of weight? No. It, it's the, the same musical. I've never gained so much weight that it could change my voice. I mean, I've heard that some singers sing, uh, have more resonance with more like weight. The opera people, like the opera people. Yeah, they said that but, like Leontine Price. They said yeah. that the, I think her name is Leontine Price and Beverly no, no, she Hills. was a dancer. No, there was somebody. There was there was an African American opera singer. I forgot her name. Then there was Beverly Sills and, and Mel Melia Jackson. No, Jackson. no, but they but they always say that you know if you're larger, it's more as you were saying more resonance. But I I, I don't yeah. know. You can't lose weight because then you'll change. It's like I no, it. I've never I've never. I've never been so big that it changed my voice. Um, but I was a lot skinnier when I started. So, you know, no. <laughs> well, ladies, it's 818. We've got about like, you know, 12 minutes left. It's way past Carla's bedtime. It um, really is. I got to get up early off. Carla, all right, you, you can leave. Carla, where, you can leave. We'll stay on. Where can people find you and tell us what to promote? And then we'll just, we'll, we'll continue. And tell us what to promote, okay? <laughs> tell us what um, to promote, Carla Collins. Well, you can find me at Carla Collins Comedian or ComedicMeditation.com, CarlaCollins.com. But yeah, mostly I wanted to, because listen, it's pretty rare that anybody gets to put out an album this year in the world of comedy. Um, I, in between shutdowns, got to perform two shows I think that both you and Durga may know the um, venue, the Elma Combo, which is quite iconic in Toronto, Canada. Yes, and yeah. so um, I had an amazing uh, editor and it's come out really well. It's called Van Pandemic, but it's not just all about COVID, but it's all about sort of, it's a nice screenshot of this last year. Um, so I would love people to, you know, I think the idea is pre-sales on iTunes. Oh, you'll love this. There's been a, uh, a bit of a fuck up and it's it's listed as new age that's <laughs> how my life goes <laughs> and i'm like and if you saw the album cover which is clutch naked what's that are you naked on the album cover uh, you wish <laughs> <laughs> would you would you buy it if i was I would, you know what? I, I would, I right would do it do it I, i'll buy it i would promote it i would do whatever you want flash me anytime 
but I'd love for people to go and, you know, if you know the pre-orders, it's cheap as chips. It's like 10 bucks. It's a way to promote or to, you know, support a comedian and uh, pre-sales. And anyway, it's out April 9th. So if you want to do pre-sales or April 9th, that would be terrific. That's all I wanted to promote. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so great to meet all you ladies. And uh, well, and by, and by the way, Carla's signing off. But as, I, as whoever doesn't know, she was part of the second incarnation of BTS. And um, she's always welcome to come back. And, you know, she said, take me off that damn chain. I'm paraphrasing. I, it, it, it's too much. Um, when I'm available, you're on the first and third. I'll, I'll let you know. And, and, and surprisingly <laughs> and, and, and happily, she said, hey, I'll come on on Friday. So you keep doing that because we love to have you, Carla. We love you. Yeah, thanks love for you. having me. Hello. Nice to meet you, 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 Carla. Bye. Nice to meet you guys. And Durga, I want to oh, turn you out. <laughs> oh, what, what, uh, oh, what, me? Oh, what? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, me? Oh, yeah, Black Floyd, my album with my sister, Laura. We're not Lyon. done yet, Durga. Carla's oh, good I'm yeah. I thought you said me. Okay. No, I said, I said, Durga, I want to turn you out, because that's what you said to me when we did something about oh, that. Okay. So. I was just, gonna I was say, just doing a holler back. Anywhere, there's always a place to put your phone. Just keep it on vibrate, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and that's a mic drop. Mwah, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> love you. But, so <laughs> that was a good one, Durga. <laughs> Hilarious. I wanted yeah. to um, ask, um, Mara, you said you were sorry when, when um, Gay Ann was going to a collar. And I just want to tell you guys something. I don't know if you found this, Roxanne, but whenever I trained women in the gym and I, I adjust them or I hold it this way, not that way, or no, not like this, they say they're sorry. Through an entire session, they're always, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not yeah. one man that I have ever trained when I, I adjust them or say, um, you want your knee a little bit further back. Okay. Now, yeah. one guy says sorry, yeah. but women are constantly saying, I'm sorry. I do. Like, I do. An hour. I do. I do. I am so guilty of that. Not in the gym, obviously, but I am so guilty of that. If someone says something, I'm like, I'm sorry. Or if I bump in, or if I, I'm like, oh. it's the weirdest shit. I mean, and I'm like, where did I get that from? I'm not so, I mean, you know, why am I apologizing for nothing? I mean, sometimes- I know. I'm that way too. Not I've been noticing it at the, at the market just incessantly, like someone bumps into me and I'm like, oh, sorry. Exactly. It's like, don't, sh it's like, I think that's just part of me, like used to keeping the peace all the time and, and avoiding conflict and low self-esteem, honestly. Unlike, unlike Tristan. Ah, that's a quick, wait, I got to ask something since you mentioned that, Gay Ann, yeah. every time we skirt on a subject where people could come into conflict on this show and actually talk about something that like really was intense, you always shut it down. Why do you do that? <laughs> I can tell you why. She because does. I'm going to tell you why, because I listen to these shows after and it's different than being in a studio when you are on Zoom and there is a heated thing and everybody jumps on the bandwagon. It is noise. You can't hear anything. It cancels everything out. So that is, am I right, Christian, that that's, that's what it sounds like when everyone's just jumping on? It's, the, it's different. It is, when you're in the studio, we've had heated arguments in, studio, in the studio. We've, you know, God knows Tristan and I go at it. But I mean, it, but it's like, but you're right there in person and it's not annoying. It is annoying on okay. this thing. It is absolutely annoying and it bothers me. So I don't have tolerance for that. So I would rather like if we do have topics that come up or heated things, then maybe all of us should just know that and not jump on each other. But that's part of the thing is someone says something, you want to jump on it. So it's very difficult how to manage it on Zoom, which is why I can't wait to get back in the studio. Yeah. But but that is that is the biggest thing is not that I don't want to skirt. And quite frankly, you know, there are some topics we've had talked about ad nauseum, and I don't and I, I don't want to keep repeating shit on the show, to be honest. And um, you know, that's really all it is. It's not like, you know, it's and I'm I'm not defending myself. I feel like I mean I'm not defending myself or how I run my show. But it's just, it really is very chaotic. And I don't even participate sometimes. And when I see you guys all go at it, 
I'm here going, I got to shut it down because yeah. it's annoying the fuck out of me. And just to let you know, if someone accidentally bumps into me at the store, I'm not going to say, I'm sorry. I'll say, excuse you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Mara and I, Mara and I are cut from the same cloth. Mara and I are fucking apologizing to people because, I mean, you, Mara and I try and keep the peace. You like to stir up the shit. I'm an Aries, baby. I'm ready. You know, we should always, always be polite, you know, and eat yeah. dirt once in a while. But I just noticed that women are constantly saying they're sorry for no reason. If you, if you did something, of course, say you're sorry. But people, women are constantly, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, during conversations. I'm like, why? There's no need to be sorry. I think yeah. we've been conditioned that way. It's weird that men mm-hmm. don't. I don't know of many men that go around saying they're sorry all the time. Especially to each other. Like, all right. Okay, bud. Yeah, you got it. But they don't say they're here's, sorry. Here's an interesting, an interesting experiment I want you all to try. Well, once we're back out public, walking down the street, someone mentioned to me that a lot of times when you're walking towards somebody, men will not get out of your way and they expect you to get out of their way. And I've stopped doing because I realized I was and I stopped doing it. And I just look at them like, well, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm walking here. You move. And people will get, I mean, I'm a big bitch, so they'll get out of my way. But um, it's well, very it's COVID, it's kind of hard. Well, well no, we're, we're, we're back to normal, but you're right. I mean, I, look, we're going to wrap up because we've got like four minutes. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, obviously this culture is very, it's always been male dominated, white male dominated, um, mm. period. It always has been here, the world. I mean, I don't, I don't know one country where, and oh. you know, where one country where women, sort of you know have you know dominance like size. yeah dominance i i don't so we which is interesting it. because you know women back in old 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 days women were the matriarchs you know mm-hmm. and when did that take its power shift and by taking that it's taken our power away so you know again i mean i know this show i just love when the girls talk because we talk about things that it's a woman's show not that i want to alienate any gentleman but you know, it's about topics that really affect us. And I love and thank each and every one of you for being vulnerable, you know, to discuss things that, you know, it's, it's on the air. It's not like we're having a phone call. And it's, I appreciate all of you for being open and honest and, and to letting, and I appreciate all the listeners and viewers to have us come into your living room or wherever you watch us or listen to us. And, and, the, and for the brave ones that call in, I mean, we don't bite, you know? Um, it's always about getting, I know you do. It's about getting other people's perspectives, you know, and, and, and yeah, if there's something that's controversial, you know, cert- or you disagree with us, certainly call in. This is an open forum. I just, you know, shut things down because it just gets a lot, a little noisy and then you no one's making their point. And I think everybody needs to be heard in a society where women are not heard a lot. I want to create a forum here where we have and have a voice to be heard whether people agree with us or not, because guess what? It's about loving yourself, standing in your truth, standing in your truth, be who you are, you know? And, um, and, and really, I think I, I have to learn with not being that kind of, in a way, a people pleaser just to keep the peace and sometimes, you know, not getting my stuff out there. And then I feel I'm not listened to and I'm being, you know, quelched. Well, you know what? I'm responsible for me. I am responsible for that and I shouldn't be resentful. So ladies, you know, find your voice. We all have the power. Let's band together. And, um, you know, women power, you know, I think we're all just beautiful and unique and, um, you know, we're all working on each other as long as you strive to be a better person and, um, you know, start with yourself, start to start to make yourself whole before you start to try and fix others. It start within yourself and it's not fixing it's um what's that word renovation i think in my 50s i'm renovating myself <laughs> <laughs> so um thank you ladies for watching thank you thank you we're on the first and third friday of every month here on um united broadcasting network uh find us find me on instagram qte brat please follow our between the sheets facebook page um you'll see you know, you can look at and listen to uh, this podcast on any of the platforms where podcasts are offered. You can watch the video version of this on YouTube. Um, and let's go around the room. I want to thank my lovely ladies. Ronnie, where are you? Where can they find you? 
Well, they can find me on Facebook now at um, Hey Ronnie Fitness Coach. Hey Ronnie Fitness Coach. I'm Ronnie Low, Ronnie L O A on Instagram and Clubhouse and Twitter. Um, see you there. Thank you, Durga. Uh, Durga McBroom on Facebook, on my personal page and my fan page on Twitter at Mrs. Durga McBroom. Uh, my Instagram is Durga Diva. And uh, also look for the McGroom Sisters page and look where you can buy Black Floyd because it's a pretty damn good album. Thank you. And Roxanne, or otherwise known as Tristan, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at RoxanneRosen.com. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Marshane. Marshane. <laughs> uh, uh, you can find me on let's see mara shane on facebook um mara shane art on instagram Marshane comedy on uh facebook as well thank you it's, and, it's always it's a great show it's great being on thank you you're welcome thank you christian for being back at the studio um and being a great whatever you do you're doing it well i appreciate it um producer, <laughs> producer whatever i don't care it's he's fabulous um and um, thank you, ladies, to everyone who called in um, and being part of it. Thank you again, Carla, um, up in Canada. And, um, you know, who knows what the mix will be, you know, in a couple of weeks. So thank you again. Happy Easter. Um, happy Passover. It's over now, um, a couple of hours. Um, I thank you. I appreciate all of you. Please spread the word that the show is on the first and third Friday of every month. And <clears throat> after this, I'll be running some watch parties and maybe Mara will do a watch party. So you'll find us. Um, thank you again and have a great night. And as always, namaste. Thank you. Hear the music, Christian. Christian. <laughs> <laughs>